Shalom to the royal family of Israel. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Most High Yahweh. Name is Holy Beyond Son, Yahweh Bashem and Mashiach Yahweh. I want to give a citation to all the mighty men, the mighty women, and mighty children of Israel. And today we're going to be discussing this powerful high holy day, the memorial of blowing of trumpets, otherwise known as the Feast of Trumpets. Now let's start off with our first scripture. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 24, and let's get verse 23. All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God, even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregation of Jacob. Keeping the high holy days of the Most High God is the heritage of Jacob and the Israelites, you Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And these must be kept, all right? So this is why we have to keep this. It was commanded by the Most High, as a part of our heritage. Flee from all those pagan holidays like Christmas and Easter. Start keeping the high holy days that are in the Bible, all right? Now let's go to the book of James chapter one. Let's get verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. You can't just be a hearer of the law. You can't look at this video and then decide that you're not gonna do it. No, it's your obligation now. All right. Otherwise, you know that you're willfully sitting and we know that if you willfully sin, there's no repentance. All right. You can't be a hearer of the law. You must also be a doer. You heard it. Now you must do it. All right. Now let's go to the book of James chapter one and verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed. The doer of the law will be blessed, not just the hearer. Now let's go to the book of Romans chapter two. Let's get verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. You are not a Jew, or a fate, you know, a faithful Israelite, just because you look like one on the outside, and you have all your garments and all the rest of that. Now you must be a Jew on the inside by keeping the commandment. It's much more important that you're doing righteousness than trying to just look righteous. Now let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter five, verse fifteen. Be not ignorant of anything in a great manner, matter, or a small. Be knowledgeable about God's laws, statutes, and commandments. I know that they didn't teach you about this in the Christian church, but you're learning now. You can't put it on them anymore. Now it's on you. Let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 23. Let's get verse 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall be shall ye have a sabbath a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation ye shall do no servile work therein but ye shall offer an offering made by the fire unto the lord this is a statute of the children of israel forever and also it is a sabbath that's why it says no servile work and and no we do not do animal sacrifices anymore because we had yahweh also known as christ he was the final sacrifice. So now we can repent, but that doesn't mean we can just sin, all right? That's not what he came here for, all right? So we don't have to do animal sacrifices anymore. We ought to be stoned. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, and let's get verse 31. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and, we, and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. You cannot buy or sell on certain particular high holy days, such as the the blow the feast of trumpet. It must be kept as a Sabbath. Now let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Let's get verse 16. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No mat no manner of work shall be done in them save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. You cannot do any type of work on the Sabbath days. The memorial blowing a trumpet. Now, to be clear, it's one day and it, it is a Sabbath day. And normally on the Sabbath, you're not allowed to cook, like light a fire to cook your food. But on, on the Feast of Trumpets, you are allowed to cook. And every High Holy Day as well, in which there must be a feast day. Now, let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. It is the day of blowing the trumpets unto you. Now, the 
Memorial blowing of trumpets takes place in the first day of the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar, of the lunar calendar, which goes by the full moon being the first day of the month. All right. And it is a Sabbath and we must have holy convocation, which means that we need to, need to be in together. You need to be reading the scriptures. All right. With other believers, other Israelites, not these random he heathens like Lil Ray Ray or anything like that, but you need to be keep it um, in holy convocation with your fellow Israelites reading the word. We're going over the the accounts of why we even have the memorial blowing a trumpet. Now let's go to the book of Philippians chapter two and verse two. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And let's get a precept. The book of Romans chapter twelve and verse sixteen. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. You have to be in holy convocation with like-minded people, not heathens. You must be of the same mind. Now let's go to let's go to the book of Genesis. Let's get chapter forty-nine. Let's get verse one. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel, your father. We are commanded to gather together. We must come together. You cannot do this by yourself, all right? Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25 and verse one. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. The Most High loves it when brethren that are together in unity come together. Loving your fellow Israelite neighbors, not Edomite neighbors, and a husband and a wife who agree. These are the things he loves. Notice how they all have um, something in common, that they're all about unity coming together and having love, all right? That's what the Feast of, of Trumpets is about. It's about loving um, your fellow Israelites and keeping it with keeping the high holy days with glee, not because you feel like you have to, and not in a sorrowful state. Everyone should be in a good mood. Now let's go to the book of Psalm, chapter one thirty three and verse one. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You guys need to dwell together in unity, not separately, not with hatefulness in your heart. All right. Now let's get a definition on the word memorial because it's a memorial of blowing a trumpet from. Um, Strong's from two H2142, a memento or memorable thing, day or writing, memorial record, memorial remembrance record. We're here to, we're keeping this in remembrance of the day of when the Most High had a circle around Jericho and destroy and had the, and the Most High had the walls coming down. All right. And we're remembering that. Now let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 and verse 24. He that hath small understanding and feareth God is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the most high. You may not know all of the breakdowns of the Bible, but you fear the Lord and keep his commandments. That is what the Lord wants us to do. As long as you're, as long as long as you're making the absolute best effort you possibly can with all your heart, mind, and soul to keep these commandments, all right, and love the Most High as better than having a lot of knowledge and doing none of those things, like a Pharisee. Now, let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 19 and verse 14. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people. And they washed their clothes, and he said unto the people, Be ready again against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderstorms and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. The Lord came down to the people in his chariot, large chariot of fire that comes down out of the sky. Not a literal chariot drawn by horses, but something that looks more similar to what people would call, I hate to say it, but they call it a UFO, okay? And he blew his trumpet or his chauffeur, his ram's horn extremely loudly to where the point where he's making the earth shake, all right? This is one of the first accounts of a trumpet being used, used by the Lord. This is a reminder of our time in the wilderness, all right? Now let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 10, and let's get verse 10. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow the, with the trumpet over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I'm the Lord your God. 
solemn days, and in the beginnings of months, new moons, blow your trumpets. You can go get yourself a chauffeur on Etsy. They're actually quite cheap. All right, now let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 10. Let's get verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camp. These are types of blowing to trumpet. All right, now let's, now let's keep going. Let's get verse three. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are the are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. Again. These are, these are, this is um, another type of blowing, but one that's um, talking to the princes, all right? But there's only one chauffeur or one trumpet, as they call it. Let's go to verse five. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. When ye blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journey. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm and the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpet, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. All right. So they have so these um, trump trumpets or chauffeurs were meant to be alarms to people, and they have different types. They had code that they knew. All right. Now let's keep going to verse nine. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpet and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God and ye shall be saved from your enemies also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months ye shall blow with the trumpets over the burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial before your God I am the Lord your God all right so again we got to blow before we go to war we got to blow as a warning, all right, we blow before our offering, all right, and you should make it a point to blow on the high holy days and the Sabbath, all right, and the new moons, which are more high holy days. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, and verse 7. And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, these are instruments, expect they get, except they give a distinction in, in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? The sound of the trumpet dictated how the Israelites conducted themselves. As mentioned before, it was like a code. Now, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6. Let's get verse 17. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. The watchmen blew the trumpets. We literally had watchmen of Israel. All right? And they would stand. They would look over the gates. And they blow. All right? And if you don't listen, um... Yeah, you're not going to know what's going on. That's going to be all bad for you. Now, let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. Let's get verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchmen, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people, let's go to verse 4, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come, and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Alright? And now this is not just talking about the trumpets back in the, uh, the, um, the wilderness. This is talking about us. We are the watchmen for Israel these days. Us Israelites are waking up in this truth. Alright? And it's our job to sound, all right? If we, if we, if now that we know, we got to spread the word, all right? As your duty as a son of, son of God, all right? Not just some sort of Christian. No, it's biologically related to the Lord by being a descendant of Israel, all right? Now, let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. Let's get verse 6. But if the watchmen see, if, see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require of the watchman's hand. So thou, o son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. You got to warn people of the destruction coming. We're going to have World War III. We're going to have Yahawashah coming with fire 
or lasers coming out of his mouth to destroy the world. It's a duty of the watchman to blow the trumpet and to warn the people. It's our job spiritually to sound the alarm for our people of the impending trouble that's going to come. Tell our people to obey the commandments or they will perish. Now let's go to the book of Joel chapter 2. Let's get, let's get verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, meaning that it's near. That's what nigh means, it's coming close. The trumpets are a warning to our people that the Lord is coming. And we're also blowing a trumpet by making these videos, by being out on the street, by doing whatever we can to wake up our fellow Israelites, you Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let's go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 25. Let's get verse eight. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of the year of years unto thee seven times seven years that's 49 and the space of seven sabbaths of years shall be unto thee 40 and nine years then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month and the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land just like sabbath days where you rest on the seventh day we used to have seven years every every we used to have sabbath years every every seventh year doing that seven times will get you 49 years on the 50th year is the year of the jubilee the 10th day of the seventh month is the day of atonement you will proclaim liberty from this bondage bondage hard labor curses and oppression let's go to the, the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, let's get verse 10. And ye shall hallow the 15th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man to his family. So the Sabbath year, not only was it for letting the land rest, but it's also of of letting go of debts if some guy owes you 84 million dollars you got to let him free of that debt obviously that's not going to happen to any black hispanic or native american because we're currently under our oppressors and we have nothing but you got to let go of debts all right and and that's what and that's a part of brotherly love right the most high doesn't want you holding things over people forever and ever and ever okay like like esau does to us like amalek does to us now let's go to the book of psalm chapter 81 and verse 1 sing aloud unto god our strength make a joyful noise unto the god of jacob take a psalm and bring it hither to bring and bring hither the timbrel the pleasant harp and the psaltery blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day for for this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. You are commanded to blow the trumpet. You need to do it. That's what the whole thing is about, okay? Let's go to the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 9, let's get verse 13. They also of Judas' side, even they sounded their trumpets also, so that the earth shook at the noise of the armies, and the battle continued from morning till night. The trumpets were used during war when the Maccabees were slaughtering Edomite people, all right? And they're blowing trumpets because these were skilling declarations of war, like a battle cry. You blow it, and you know the Israelites are coming for you, all right? And, all right, those Edomites, they definitely should have been trembling in fear because the Israelites had the Lord on their side, all right? This is our battle cry. It's your weapon. Now let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the thing of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. A carnal man, most people on the planet, hates the will of the Most High. He does not understand the blowing of the trumpets. He thinks it's foolishness. That's because he's a fool. Shalom Israel, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to the Most High Yahweh and to His mighty Son, Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. And today we're going to be talking about the reason why we celebrate the Feast of Trumpets. Fair use, this is our opinion and commentary on this video. I was with Moses when he handed down these commandments. I was witness to the covenant, the promise of a holy nation. Help me to force that nation to lead your people to inherit their land. The Lord brought us out from Egypt. He promised us this land. And soon, it will be ours. 
Jacob. Are you ready? We'll search the whole city. Just find me a way in. We must take Jericho. It's all that stands between us and the promised land. Slavery. They are his chosen. This whole city is terrified of you. How can we fight a people whose God can do that? Open up! Open up! Back in time! I'm gonna go! We get out that way. Help us and we will help you. Go. I'll store them if I can. Come with us. I can't. My family. When our army comes, hang this on your door, so they will know not to harm you. You'll be passed over. Joshua! Tell me, did you find a way in? Is there a weakness? No, in the walls. But, in their hearts. Joshua, we met a woman. She thinks God has taken the city already. The people melt in fear because they know he is with us. God is with us. But we've still to find a way in. Moses. My old friend. What would you do? Lord, when I was a slave, you showed me your love and your power. You have given me new life. Would you have us turn back? Who? Who are you? I pray you are with us, and not with our enemies. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him, and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? I am with God, commander of the Lord's army. What does he ask of us? The Lord parted the waters for Moses. You. He will split rock. This is what you must do. March around the city once a day with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Carry the ark with you. It contains God's commandments. He is with you. Then, on the seventh day, March around the city seven times. Then the priests should make a long blast with the ram's horn. As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet. She must be spared for how she gave us. You're gonna leave me behind. No. Joshua, no. you gotta get the fighting men together and take that city for sundown. It's a big city, Moses. Yeah. With walls all around it. We ain't got enough men. 
You'll take it all right. You just move up to the walls with our people. Tell the priest to go with you with the ram's horns. And you start marching around those walls and and then... Yes, sir. Well, the Lord will take charge. Just as he's always took charge whenever I've led you against the city. He ain't never failed you yet, has he? No. No, he won't fail you now. Oh, Lord, I'm turning over our brave young men to you. Because I know you don't want me to lead them no further. Just like you said, I've reached the Jordan and I can't get over it. On account of I broke the tablets of the law. Amen. Amen. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're going to camp tonight in the city of Jericho. Everybody follow Joshua. But did we help you, Moses? No, the Lord's got his plans for me. You go ahead. Go ahead. Give the signal to march. On the Jericho! And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. And here's the account of the walls of Jericho coming down. And here's the account. And we can get that in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. The Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with, tr with the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when we hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed followed them and the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets and the reward came after the ark and the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets and joshua had commanded the people saying ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day i bid you shout then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord come past the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them. And But the reward came after the ark of the Lord the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they come past the city once and return into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and come past the city after the same manner seven times. Only that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are, are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise keep, your, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves a curse. When ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver, and gold, and vessels of brass, and iron, 
are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted with the priests, blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox, and sheep, and ass, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out of the country, Go into the harlot's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that was therein, only the silver, and the gold, and the vessels of brass, and, I and of iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelled, dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers, which jo Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, A curse be the man before the Lord, that riseth up and buildeth the city, this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and if and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. And this was the account of the walls of Jericho falling. So Jericho was a city that was in the way of the Israelites when they came out of the wilderness. So the Most High promised the Israelites that he would destroy the city if they followed his instructions, which ultimately mean they had to have faith in the Lord to do what he he had them to do. And to believe that once they did it, thus the walls of Jericho would fall. So an, an angel told this to Joshua. And so the Israelite, they went around the city seven times for six days and they, and they blew the trumpets. And on the seventh day, they went around seven, seven times and they shouted and the walls of Jericho fell and they uh, ransacked the city. They killed all the people. They took all their precious metals and stuff um rahab the harlot and her family were spared because she helped two spies when they went into the city to spy and so that is the account of the walls of jericho now let's go to the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 14 let's get verse 14 defraud not thyself of the good day and let not the part of a good desire over past thee shalt thou not leave thy travails unto another and thy labors to be divided by lot? Give and take, and sanctify thy soul. For there is no seeking of dainties in the grave. Don't be miserable on the feast day. Do not defraud yourself. You cannot keep the feast days from the grave, even though you're wishing, um, you'll be wishing that you had more works while you were alive. You'll be wishing that you did more kind gestures. You will, you're gonna be wishing you gave more alms before Hamashiach came back. Keep the commandments now not when it's too late. You guys need to keep the feast days as if it's your last feast day. Don't be underzealous. Do not be slothful. Do not have a sad or apathetic spirit. All right? Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 27, verse 12. And it shall come to pass that in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. This is the last trumpet that will be blown. All right, this is prophecy. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elon and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. This is where we're scattered at. This is just talking about the entire planet. We've been sent into captivity across the whole planet. We've been sent into slavery across the whole planet. Not just chattel slavery. We're sent everywhere. All right. And this Trump is going to be the final Trump after we have Jacob's trouble, after World War Three, us being brought back. All right. Being beamed up and being saved from our oppressors. All right. And 
and Isaiah 56 and 8, the Lord God which give, gathereth the outcast of Israel saith, Ye will I gather others to him besides those, those that are gathered unto him. So again, the Most High is going to gather us. We're going to be saved. The elect is going to be saved from the thermonuclear missiles. All right. Saved from the lasers that will be coming out of Yahweh's mouth. We'll be saved from the torment of our oppressor. That is the good news. So today we learned that we have to keep the memorial of blowing of trumpets. It is a Sabbath day. It must be kept in holy convocation. All right. It's reminding us of our time in the wilderness of how we how we we triumphed against Jericho of how the most and the most high's only begotten son came down with his chauffeur. All right. And how we we need to be keeping the commandments. All right. We need to keep the faith of Yahweh by Shem and Mashiach and Mashah. We need to keep this high holy day with glee and joy in the seventh lunar month, according to the full moon, not the dark moon. And with that, Shalom. You know I got ya. Yeah. Break the wall down. Break the wall down. The Lord gave me power. I'm gonna drown, gonna take my troops and march around. Take out the show bars, make the sound. Guess what, Becca? Break it down. Break the wall 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 down. <laughs> this is a demonic world that's going to end in fire.